Hey, love bugs, it's Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favored, and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome to my returning subs, my grown extended beautiful family. If we're going through these new moon phases and all that stuff, so please make sure you are getting enough self care for yourself, recharging when you need to recharge, meditate when you need to meditate. And you know, take a break when you need to. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light. And many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have been watching my videos for a while and have not already, please like and subscribe. Even hit that notification bell so you know when I'm about to upload my next video. Also, if you are comfortable enough, please drop me a line or two. I love the chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me. Even if it's the positive feedback of the content of my video, or you're just up telling me about your impact, the gift, and how it impacts your life and heading you towards a positive direction. Also, if you uh, feel like the video has been very informative to you and you need to share with a loved one, family, or friend, please go ahead and do so, especially if they need validation or conf confirmation towards the life path or even soul purpose. And while you're at it, give me a thumbs up, like, and also share on your social media favorites wherever you see fit. So thank you so much for the love and support. It's so greatly appreciated. And I hope you're able to resonate with the content of my video. And today I'm listening to, I love this beat. I don't know what they're using, but um, it's uh, Kundalini Music Instrumental, uh, Powerful Data Brainwaves, and Spiritual Drum Music, 7 Hertz, Iso Chronic. And I will post that link in the description box below. I said when it first started, I was like, hey, I like that. Um, and the video I'm doing today is Twin Flame 101. Hey, uh, running away from things we truly need to face and move on. There was a lot of times that, you know, I had some stuff going on in my life. And, you know, it's just like things, certain things can trigger you. It could be a saying or, you know, certain things you might see that might, you know, that, you know, might trigger you and thinking into uh, things that have, you know, hurt you or, you know, just really messed you up in the past. I've had that happen to me and I have to keep telling myself, you know what, don't put any emotion in this. It's like if you, if it reoccurs, it's obviously it's something that you need to heal and let go of. And I have to keep telling myself that as well. You know, it was like, hey, you know, this is not even happening to you no more. Yes, it did happen in the past, but you're not in this situation anymore. Do not allow this to affect you. Because sometimes it's like when um, certain things that, you know, we're healing from, it's like things be resurfacing. I told y'all, we do, we do have times where things resurface and it's like more it could be either the fact is you're still healing from that and you're not letting it go or is this one of these memories that everything is starting to come up and it's allowing you to uh, basically you know let go of that situation it's resurfacing so it can be set free and that's what it is and it's just a lot of times you know people uh you know, see something like, okay, I'll take care of that later. You know, I don't want to think about that no more. No, it's, that's the time when it comes up. You need to allow yourself to say, this does not have power over me. You're not renting space. You, you know, that, that memory is just renting space and not paying no bills. So basically, that's like somebody living with you rent free. And it's not, you know, not helping contributing to anything, you know, at least cooking, cleaning, you know, something like that. But basically, it, that's what it is. It's like we, we can run away from so many things that's happening in our lives. And it's just like when it comes back up again, it's going to be 10 times worse than what it is. So it's just like whatever is like you're running from. I used to always run from the situation. Like I used to have nightmares about my, my biological father. And I didn't even realize I was doing that. And it was like back when I was like, what was it, 13 or 14. I used to have a fear of punk rockers. And I don't know why I used to have fear of punk rockers, you know, with the spiked hair and stuff like that. I used to have nightmares about that. And then it would be somebody in a rock group and wasn't putting two and two together. And I would always have this person saying, wait, don't run, don't run. But I would never see them, never see them. It was just always the shadow. Or it's like... Um, what 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 else was it where i have a, it was like a creepy dream i had right before i watched nightmare on elm street for the first time if anybody watched the first nightmare on elm street when nancy went running up those stairs and all of a sudden her feet start getting stuck in that daggone 
the stairs like putty. Um, what was it, pudding or whatever that stuff was. And that was like, I ended up freaking out because I had a dream like that, that I was running away from my dad doing that. And it just didn't realize back then in the 80s, and what is it yeah early late 80s that i was actually the runner of a twin flame i did not know all these things i kept running from him all the time and did not realize i needed to face that situation but it was just like can never talk about him you know it was just like i always had to wait until my mom was by herself to even say anything about it and then my mom would get jumpy at times because it was just the fact is you know her husband didn't want me to know about certain things in life so there was a lot of things that I was running from and it, it was a sad situation that you know all the truth started coming out right when my father had passed away so it's just like all the things that I've endured throughout my life I always put it on hold or put it in a back burner either because I didn't want to face it because it was too painful or I just really didn't understand and wasn't putting two and two together and that was just still when I still had that hypnosis thing that was still going on so it took for me to have that you know basically a reverse effect and it had all that stuff coming up at one time and when you were dealing with all that at one time that was a lot to deal with you know so I know I had to face all these things and it's just like certain things are still not pretty you know and the fact is I can handle them now better than I was be able to before because it was just like okay I'm dealing with stuff like this I need to heal from it these are things I really truly need to face and stop running from these things because it'll make me feel better even though it's not it's not feeling better because my dad's not here but it'll make me feel better to understand why I went through the things I went through what happened where I they happen you know I used to carry around a lot of guilt because my dad would constantly come see me but when it came to my mom's ex-husband and his their wife they were very deceitful on a lot of things instead of being honest and telling me you know a family member is coming to see you it would just always be a surprise and those are not the type of people that surprises me they might do that for her children and her family but not for me so it was a scary situation to go past her house and seeing all these limousines and SUVs and stuff there and I'm like I don't know if they got some Illuminati stuff going on because I know they're you know one's a Mason and one's an Eastern Star and they kept on trying to get me to get into it and I'm just like I didn't know what they had going on so it was just like I didn't know they were trying to hit me up or something trying to blame me for something I ain't know so it was just like a whole guilt trip that I put myself on because I was running away from certain things in my life and it was just like if you know the twin flame effect it gives you a weird, you know, vibe. So on top of that, coming from that house, you know, in that situation, it gave me a weird vibe. My friend was like, you want to go over there? Hell no. I don't know what that feeling is. And I don't want to engage in it. I don't know what it is. But it was just like, now I'm going through all the things that, you know, I really felt bad about. And it was just like, when I talk amongst it about my friends at the time that I was talking to, you know, they're like, Rosalind, you can't feel bad about stuff like that. You can't be guilty because they weren't honest with you. You know, they were very deceptive. So it's just like, yeah, I made those decisions on not going, but they weren't out open and honest about my situation. It was always deceit and this, you know, deception and lies and cover ups off of cover ups. So, you know, dealing with all those things, I had to be able to face them. I had to look at them no matter how painful they are how dark they were I had to be able to face that stuff and heal from it you know there are certain things that still come up and I have to not allow myself to get triggered and get upset you know there's a lot of you know uh, what was it about you know my, my adopted father my mom's ex-husband and his wife they would I would be the water cooler joke that she would have amongst our friends and they would tease me about being the trust fund fun kid you know it's like how do you feel about being a trust fund kid and I never knew what they were talking about today you know or they say oh nobody cares about you they just care about what they can get from you and didn't know what the heck they were doing so it's like a lot of those things kept coming up that was very painful you know I will always be in a corner crying you know because people would tell me oh well we know who your real family is and they don't want to tell you so it was just like a lot of hurtful things that kept coming out that I truly had to heal from and it's just like okay these people are narcissistic you have to just pray for them because they're jealous of the fact is how much your dad would do any and everything for you so they held you hostage <laughs> for them to be able to get what they wanted and they still didn't let my dad see me so that was like torturing us both 
So it's like going through all these different things, I had to eventually heal from, allow myself to know they, they can no longer trigger me. I don't. I walked them out of my life. I got my closure. And I was so happy I was able to get my closure so I can be able to move on, being able to heal. You know, it's a daily day, you know, it's a day to day basis on dealing with that. It was just like, that was my milestone I had to be able to go through is face them and tell them, you know, you don't, you know, I had got my, you know, I tolerated you for that quick minute for my daughter's graduation. It wasn't like I was trying to sit up here and rekindle anything from you. I know everything you did to me and I know why you did it, but there ain't no need for us to be chit chatty. You know, I said, <laughs> you know, I have to go about my business. I said, I have to take that. Sorry. I never got from you. And since y'all don't want to tell me the truth, I'm going to go about my business and keep going. You know, and that's, that really made me feel good because that was a milestone. Because it's just like when you can hold anger in your heart, having homicidal tendencies when it comes to folks like that, that I had to be able to get from. Being able to heal and say that these people can no longer affect me. Those are all the things I had to heal from. Those are all the things I had to face because I ran from them for years. And I, when I, when I finally faced it, all it was is anger coming up. You know, you did this, you did that, you did this. I don't have time for you know pointing fingers because when it comes to a narcissist, you will never be able to argue with them. You will never win that argument. They know you're right, but they're never going to admit that you're right. You know, because that means that they had to, you know, basically come out saying they're, they're at fault. And it was just like going through all those different things. It was even sad because of the situation I was going through. You know, my mom's ex-husband is a preacher and his wife is a first lady. And I'm just like, who the heck are you preaching to and where are you sending them to? You know, I'm just like for you to do that and you're supposed to be a person of the cloth. That really had me looking at Christians a different way. And I try not to do that because not all Christians are those the same way. Because there's just like, you know, there's Christians and there's Bible thumpers. And I really feel that way. And it's no disrespect towards anybody but religion. You know what I'm saying? But if you have been built, you know, I've almost every preacher I've came across in my life had some dark secrets that came up. And I'm just like, why do I keep finding these type of folks? <laughs> you know, I would like to have an honest reverend that can come talk to me about some stuff. And it was just like er almost every preacher I've came across, almost all of them, not all of them, though, have had dark secrets, really dark secrets. But you're trying to praise somebody to the Holy Land. And I'm just like, no, nah, we can't do all that. And that's when I started becoming spiritual, because I felt like if you're a person of God, you don't do things like this. You, that, that's just one thing God is not going to allow you to do. And even though you have done them for so long, what makes you think you're going to get away with something like that? Just because, you know, you get away with stuff for a while back. Now it's just at that point where this is the year when all these masks start coming off. And I've been saying this for the last two years. Like, if you noticed anything, you know, you know, I hate watching the news. But there are so many people that have been so deceptive for so many years. Things are starting to come out. And they're, they're, you know, it's not just coming out for a year or two, but these things are starting to come out from years ago and it's starting to come back and haunt folks. So it's just like you have to be careful how you do people. You have to be careful of the things that you push out to the universe. There's things that you need to heal from. But, you know, if we we're speaking from hate and not from love, it, it tends to, you know, come right back to us. And that's why I had to really, you know, not do that. And it took me a while to, it, you know, it took me a while to have to do that. And I keep it real with y'all about that. I had to be able to let that go because I could keep saying it. But I had to keep putting it into existence like I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. And then it had to take me for me to be able to see them. And I'm like, they ain't the monsters in my closet anymore. But it was just like, you know, with you being wide awake, you can feel people's energy. They were more scared of me than I would ever be of them. Just because the fact is, I had that point to be enraged, and I wasn't. I was calm. You know, they always feel like it's calm. It's like, oh, Lord, you know, you have to plan your stuff out. And that was the funny thing about that situation, because it's like they didn't come out with the family. They, they I'm like, where'd they go? I said, oh, yeah, they're plotting, because they, they don't know how to take me right now, because I'm being very calm. And it was like we were in front of a group of people, and they didn't know if I was going to put the business out or what. Stay calm through the whole situation. So it's just like when I can be able to face stuff like that and just, you know, that was the key that I had to be able to get through. That was the biggest milestone I had to get through. 
all the rest of it is not as bad as it was that was that big one because those are the ones who got me to this place right here but it's like when I look at it from a positive perspective I can sit up here and say if it wasn't for them I would have never known about my my spiritual gifts I would have never knew my capability of helping others through their time of sorrow and their time of trauma this done you know this done helped me like catapult towards things I never thought I would be able to so I had to thank them for that you know if it wasn't for them I wouldn't have been able to do this and it, it, it gave me strength that I never knew I had before it doubled tripled up because I'm able to sit up here and tell y'all like you know when I talked about it months and months ago if you've been with me for a while when I talked about certain things when it came like to my dad or I talked about them I would cry because I was just like how dare you you know you, you, you kept me away from my biological family and still after all is said and done you still you have everything you you can give me to, for me to go home and you still play upon that just because of what my dad is and how much he's worked you don't want me having nothing like that because that means I'm gonna be happy and they try to find every way to keep me unhappy because they knew how much my dad loved me. You can just say, oh, well, Rosalind need this, and you know he about to drop a check, which I never received. And that was what he hate, they hated about that because they knew my dad loved me with all his heart, and they kept that away. So that was a lot of things that I had to heal from. So it's just like if you have anything going on in your life that you have been running away from for a long time, please, you know, heal from that because if it comes back next time <laughs> if you plan to ignore it when you should have let it go and face it and see the you know step back and see what what lesson is trying to teach you for you to be let go because I guarantee you next time it comes back it's gonna have it's gonna come back and recap it so I'm not gonna say outro on this video but I hope everybody has a blessed week like and subscribe drop me a line and let me know if you resonate with this and everything's gonna be okay you know we just have to go go through a daily process of doing things that's gonna make us in a better light and you know letting go of things that are not serving us in that positive one either so I'll see you on my next video much love to you peace be wild well.